I want to talk trash about David Brock for a second. I want because because David Brock the, the acceptance of David Brock back again onto the left by a bunch by people who have very back again they never un, un, unaccepted not, him. <laughs> but I mean, what's their name? But the acceptance, the acceptance of David Brock is example of why the Democrats keep losing to the Republicans because they refuse to take a hard line stance on these things. And then they wonder how Trump can win, but still be a sexist because the Democratic Party has never taken a hard line stance on sexism. They've never taken a hard line stance on racism. They never, they've never said these things are non-starters. They've always sort of dabbled in it themselves. And so they can't take, make them non-starters. And then it makes it again, it makes them look like hypocrites. Because every time, like, and we saw this at the debates, every time someone brought up Trump's sexual assaults, they would bring up Bill Clinton's. And it was like, okay, it just muddies the water. At a certain right. point, the Democratic Party is going, and I hate to be like, you know, because I'm sure I'm going to get critics being purist or whatever. But at a certain point, you have to draw a moral line for yourself and say, okay, David Brock, you're sorry. That's great. But if you're really sorry, leave. Because all because your presence here devalues the party. We appreciate your apology. You, you're a millionaire. You don't need to be here. Go somewhere else. You I don't appreciate his, his, his apology. His apology is, is not a real apology. His apology is a marketing scheme. And, but yeah, he's that's, and that's, and that's, he, he's, he's made off. He is the made off. He is the made off of media. Okay. He is trying to use, you know, influence. I shout out to people for Bernie. Shout out to Winnie Wong. When when that went up earlier today, when he when he posted, she goes, They will not have access to our real estate. Because you know, people for Bernie has a massive um, network and reach. Um, I think they've, they've, they've touched like a billion. I mean, it, it, like th- their reach is insane. And that's really what they're trying to do because the Clinton campaign has actually been trying to get to a lot of our, when we talk about burning folks in the social media world, that's prime real estate. And they've been trying to get at us in various pages and groups and stuff since the primary ended. Right. And so he is trying he is trying very hard to mm-hmm. line people up and to soften the blow. And we all got to fight Trump. Dude, how stupid do you think we are? I know who the hell you are. Like, I know who you are. Ain't nobody, like, we, we not breaking bread with roaches. Like, but see, but see, that's, that's the thing, though. And, 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 I, and, I, and I responded to the initial tweet about him apologizing this exact same way. And then you have to realize that apologies only matter or mean something if the person or thing apologizing has the ability to feel shame or has pride or any of those real human emotions. Apologies from corporations and political operatives don't mean anything. They they, 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 are, they are without they are void of merit and void of actual yeah. repentance because these people don't have shame because Absolutely. because apologizing it's is large, ap- ap- apologizing is largely like you said a marketing tool it's a marketing yeah. tool because if they don't apologize they can't keep doing it. it doesn't cost them anything to apologize but it does cost something to not apologize particularly and, when he was and, just blaming millennials and everybody else for why they didn't do anything when he sucked he failed like as a propaganda machine he did nothing but make people hate his candidate he right. and him and peter dowell and the hillary men and share blue blue nation review that whole media uh what what what, what is it called um why is share blue and, and blue nation review but no you know- what's, the, what's the watchdog it's media matters right media correct matters correct. like like all that stuff correct. correct the record media matters all that stuff like whatever it's a mess yeah. And he's trying to be positioned as mm-hmm. this new progressive media voice. There's a whole piece about how he's going to build the Breitbart or the less. Pause. Breitbart, we're already blasting Breitbart for being quote unquote fake news. Why the hell do we want a left version of that? We well, I mean, I can't believe he even, like, he actually, but here, here's the problem with them. This is why he failed as being a propagandist, is that he wasn't smart enough to realize you cannot fight the left. You can't fight progressives. You can't crush us and expect us to get in line. You notice how they were ingratiating to conservatives, to Republicans. They could not even bring it within themselves to be remotely ingratiating to, to progressives, even after the primaries are over. So it's, it's, it's this thing about Democrats. They have always been able to fight the left and they've always wanted to run and embrace the right. And this is why he, he can't. He's completely incapable of turning around and doing something differently at this point because he is the perfect stooge, the perfect propagandist to continue taking the Democratic Party further and further into the arms of the Republican Party because he doesn't know what to do with the left except fight us because that little pittance of, a, of an apology or whatever that was supposed to be, that, had, that really didn't address anything. Any of the long-standing issues that we have that David Brock has put on his CB, we got a problem. He didn't address any of them, so I'm, I'm surprised. Well, I don't even care if he addressed any of them or not. Like, I don't care. I, I have a on question. Straight, on the strength of Anita Hill, I don't give a shit. 
Like, I have a question. Could people, could, people who are, could people who are really sorry? Here's here's a pro tip. If people who are really sorry, they leave. Yeah. No, no. If you were, come on, wait a minute, Brandon. You, you, you're making it seem like you know he's not getting paid. You don't say you're sorry and then cut off your money. Like this man is a mercenary and he's getting paid, so he's gonna do whatever they pay him to do. He's not even a good mercenary. Well, no, no, he's, he's not like getting paid. No, 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 no. He's a he's a merc for hire, but he's not like it's not like someone's directing him to do something. That's the guy that you slip the envelope to, that you nod your head, and they just they, they just take care of whatever it is. You don't you don't you don't need to know plausible deniability. But he's the plausible deniability guy. Yeah, right. He's one that's having the, the the messaging meetings and stuff like that, and it's very very dangerous. But really, but, but really, I'll go one further. That that whole little pitiful apology shit that was to flush people out. You know, David Brock actually did us a, a good service because people who jumped on that whole oh yes, come to the Feel the Burn family. I've seen our son. Well, feel, <laughs> feel the Burn wasn't no, even but, made up by the campaign. You appropriated no, wait, no, language. No, wait, you know what it is? Like, go, go, go should, on, a lot of people. Go on. You want to lose that vice people. chair position anyway. A lot of people are incredibly slow, and so and they, they need a lot of validation. Yes. No, no, no. They're, they're incredibly slow. They need a lot of validation, and nothing p- makes people feel more validated than when their enemies tell them that they're right and that they that they want to that they want to uh, like join their team. Now we see we like people were celebrating Kissinger a few months ago. Like Kissinger, yep. like people on the quote unquote uh, left were celebrating ago. Kissinger. Yes. Yeah, two months ago they were celebrating Kissinger, and uh, like you said, like they're celebrating George Bush. We now have a weird situation where Democrats. You know, not even just the establishment, but just you know, your rank and file Democratic voter were celebrating George H. W. Bush, the quote unquote war, someone who's declared a war criminal by us a few months, most of us a few months ago, yep. because he embraced Obama and he wanted to vote for Clinton. While at the same time, these same people are still shaming Ralph Nader for running against him, and like so I, you have people who are shaming Ralph Nader but embracing George right. W. Bush. It's, a, it's exactly what I said. They don't know how to fight conservatives because they ultimately want to be economic conservatives. That's what their goal is. So they don't have a game plan to fight them. They have a game plan to triangulate with them. Their their focus has been for the last, I don't know, shit, at least since Bill Clinton, right? Their focus has always been on putting the left in check. And so I'm surprised, that to shift gears on conversation, I'm surprised David Brock actually is that shows you how much of a slime ball he is that he actually feels entitled enough to put his face back in public and say, I want to be in charge of something on the level. Like he has he never right left to public though. That's what, what I'm saying. Yeah. He never no, left he, public. He's been he's been the the the, the man behind the wizard behind the curtain. Right. That's what I'm saying. He's never left the public. He was yeah. at a special yeah. retreat meeting thing or whatever, and he's holding some other one to kind of figure out what to do. Like he's still in them circles. And here's the problem. We can't break bread with you. Like I'm, I'm gonna be real. Like I, 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 I love and support my folks who are dim reenter and all that other good stuff. The reformers, I love you. I believe in you. More power to you. I'm not breaking bread with you, people though. Like, like, that's right. like, Democrats, I'm not breaking bread with Democrats. I'm, 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 you keep, you keep I'm, letting slime. You keep letting slime in your midst. I'm sorry. We, we can't do nothing. Want see, I want to see him jump through hoops and hurdles and still so, reject his ass. I know. Yes. You know. Listen, listen. I want to see. I want to see him grovel. I want to see him, and then we still push him out the door, right? No, like, see, that's the way. The problem, the problem, the problem, hang on one second. The problem isn't him. The problem are the people, the uh, the many, many people who are lined up, ready to bring him back into the fold, right? And 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 they. And you're right, Anoa. He did do us a service because it was so quick. People are just like, okay, yeah, let's let's bring him back. Those are the people who are the real problem because if we isolated him, yes, he has a whole lot of money, but he does not. Money doesn't have to translate into influence if the people who are actually running shit do not allow him to come back in. But you could see as soon as he said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, people open up their arms and say, come on back in, David Brock. And he has been a American problem since 1991. I'm trying to think how old this motherfucker is because he's, isn't it time for him to retire just like just like the Clintons? He should be scary looking. We're making, we're making the assumption. We're making the assumption that like, you know, this isn't all just, you know, high level Kabuki theater just to like 
you know, for him to be seen coming back into the fold, all that stuff is just, you know. He never left the fold. Why did everybody keep saying coming back in? He never well, left well, the I'm fold. I'm saying he's the Kabuki the theater, fold. like he's like he's coming back into the fold. Like Even media never matters left. has been around for over ten. Like they've been laying the propaganda and the groundwork for at least a decade now. Like he's never been out of the fold. People are just now I know, paying but attention. It's just a pretense. Like, it's a pretense. They're just putting on a show. It's it's like, whatever. Well, Even well, this whole positioning, like I don't know if any of you saw the Vanity Fair piece, and especially considering like what we do it's so important to push back on this false narrative that somehow this man is what we need to help lead progressive media and progressive voices like the fact that he's even being called progressive is like this is the type of shit that makes me want to like find a new word this is this is what i meant though this is what i mean by coming back into the fold i'm actually talking about into the fold of the actual left progressivism he's never been a part of the left He's he's oh, never okay. been. Okay. Of course he hasn't, right? But he is trying to position himself right now, today, with that letter, reaching out to Bernie Sanders with his Vanity Fair piece and with people on uh, these people who work for oh, for Bernie Sanders now openly that's embracing him. Kid, they're trying friend. to pull him in as though he's the actual left. And that's the that's why I don't believe mm-hmm. he has the nerve to oh, do but that. See, it, but- I, didn't, I shouldn't expect anything less from a slime ball like that. But this is the weird thing. Like they keep like everyone who worked on the failed Clinton campaign is now failing upwards. It's like, it, like they're treating David. They're, 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 they're treating David Brock. They're, they're treating David Brock in the people who failed the Clinton campaign. They know they're putting him in the DNC war room as though they are key assets in the fight against Trump. It's like why? It's like like why, like why do we need David Brock? Like for, forget whether or not because if he was actually useful. Like if he was the kind of assassin who could get things done, it's right. just like the only thing like, he's just a bully. Like he, he he is just simply a bully, and he's not even good at it. I don't even know like, he's, he's not a even a bully so much as he is a a a con- well connected rich uh, troll. Like he he's he's not even sh- strong in the sense that he could be categorized as a as a bully. He just pays this this these political games that end up backfiring. I mean, think about how many people has he gotten elected? I've watched you grow up none right well, his, well, his we main, don't know his how many view. people whose career has he destroyed because i'm still salty as a, as a little girl remembering what he did to anita hill so yeah. starting like, all the way back like i said he's been a problem since 91 and the obama i mean not the obamas but the shit might as well be the obamas the clinton is over you know he, he he got rejected by the religious right because he's gay lgbtq so he obviously couldn't stay a republican and that's what brought him over to the democratic party and it was a perfect fit somebody said this on twitter it was like um you know i asked has he ever apologized for being a republican shield conservative shield and the fact of the matter is he's still a conservative shield because he aligned himself with the most conservative democrat that we i don't have. care about if he's if he was a conservative shield. i'm talking about I'm, i care about the decimation of anita hill's character just for the sake of him writing a damn book and then so like, about him being a, a conservative shit. I don't give a shit about that. What I care about, I care about that and I care about Condoleezza Rice's ass talking about uh, sessions today. That's that's I mean being conservative shit. Well, you I'm sorry, just like, if, the, people, the people the people a lot of people are talking about the ways in which that uh, a lot of people are talking about the ways in which uh, the Democrats are describing Jeff Sessions. He's he's you know he's amiable. He's you know friendly. He has a nice but wife so and nice. he has a he has a, he has a, he's so nice like, nice smile. Honestly, that's the exact same thing we were just talking about President Obama. Mm-hmm. And and like if you if you can't understand like and this is you got to take off the blinders here. It's like we like we live in a world of this respectability politics. This like is reckless civility in the same like. like the same critical thinking that people are applying to Jeff Sessions right now when it comes to his past because of the fact that he dresses nice and he speaks well and he has a smile and nice family is the exact same like lack of critical thinking people are applying to President Obama. And so you have to understand that this, this goes both ways. It's not just Jeff Sessions is the worst person. Look at all the races and like, look, 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 let's turn, let's also delve deeper into our politician. I mean, not, not he's not my politician, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you, if you, if you, if you can't understand the critiques that people are lobbying at Obama, if you think that they're so unfair, but you can, but then you, on like the other hand, you can't understand how people in Congress are not treating Jeff Sessions worse. Then, like, then you're part of the problem because you like, you, like, then yet, I'm sorry, rather, then you are being a hypocrite or you're being purposely obtuse because you're doing the same thing. Part of the problem, and, yeah. and part of the problem, right, right, because uh, it's, it's go the ahead. go ahead, Nick. I was gonna say I agree with you, like what you're saying, where they they end up talking about things like, well, he's a nice guy and things of that nature. You know, I don't care what his personality is like when you meet him. I'm never gonna meet the man. My only interaction with him 
are going to be my interaction with the policies that he is a part of implementing. 